Were you destined to be a lawyer? Was that something family oriented? No. 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 I, uh, I went away to college, joined the Marine Corps, had a great life. Now, you're from Jamestown, you're a Jamestown native. Yes. And what did your, your dad do for a living? He had, with his brother, eventually, Erickson Brothers Construction Company. Okay. Okay. Built the Hunt Road Apartments, built what is now Tanglewood. At that time it was uh, the Coca-Cola plant. And they wanted me to come back to town and Betty had no objection. So an agreement was entered into that we would buy the Hunt Road Apartments. I came back and was running those. Eventually I got asked to run for city council and I went on to city council. And that was really the first time I had any experience with attorneys. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said to myself at a certain point, I'm as smart as those guys are. Why don't I go to law school? So 12 years after graduation from the University of Rochester, I entered law school in Buffalo. I would normally drive up on Sunday night. I rented a room. I go up Sunday night, go to classes, Monday through Friday, come home frequently every other week on Monday night to go to city council meetings, head back up 10, 11 o'clock on Monday night, go to classes, come home Friday, except for my senior year. They maybe take a class on Saturday. <laughs> but I would still come home for the city council meetings on Monday and sometimes on Wednesday. Uh, so I came back and uh, Arthur Bailey offered me a job. And I took the job. And that was uh, how I became a lawyer. Just because. What year, what year was this? What would have been when you became, uh, when you practiced law or get admitted to the law practice? What year was that? Well, I, uh, 1971. Okay. I graduated in uh, 70. Went to Brooklyn to, for the bar review course in the summer <laughs> and <laughs> stayed, again, in Brooklyn. And I was scared. I figured everybody that walking around, especially at night, was mafia. And at the top of the hotel was the name. And it said, St. Orgy. <laughs> and that did not you know, give me any comfort until I finally learned that, I don't know, fluorescent tubes, I call them. A letter was missing, so instead of saying St. George, it said St. Orgy. <laughs> And about three years ago, I met a lady in Florida. And uh, she said, oh, I'm from Brooklyn. And I told her, oh, I, I stayed in Brooklyn once at the same Hotel St. Orgy. She looked at me. I don't remember that hotel. Oh, I don't know where it was, but I know they had a swimming pool in it. She said, that was the Hotel St. George. That's where I learned to swim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, But anyway, we're good friends now. and. Uh, Anytime I tell a story, we normally have to chuckle like you've sure, just yeah, chuckled. Absolutely. Way up on top, St. Orgy. Uh, but uh, I came back and uh, practiced law. Who was with Art at the time, or was it just Art? No, it was uh, Al McKee okay. and Bob Griffin. Oh. The firm's name was, they hadn't changed it, Van Vlack. McKee and Bailey. Okay. But I never met, as I rem I don't believe I ever met Mr. Ben Black. I think he had already retired or died. And then it became Bailey and Griffin. And then later on, Bailey and Erickson. Then it became Lodestro, Bailey and Erickson. And then I went into a solo practice and shared space with uh, Park Cashbowl. Mm -hmm. And then eventually uh, ended into uh, uh, a relationship with Stan Weeks. He was cutting back and we were next door. 
So he would, uh, and we had a door that went between the two offices. He would, I have this young attorney next door, he'll help you. Yeah. And then Stanley really quit, and I wanted to find a way to quit and talk with Charlie Hall. And we eventually ended up into a, a, a joint venture. You know how lawyers get together. So I became uh, technically of counsel. And we had planned to go to Florida in the winter. And the first winter we went down was a nice winter, had time, good time down there. Came back and eventually I had an estate and I did all the paperwork that I normally would have done. I sent it up to uh, Mayville and they bounced it back. And you know, they don't very often tell you why they think you made a mistake. They just say, correct it. And I went over everything again and I couldn't find why it bounced. So I went to Charlie Hall and said, Charlie, can you tell me what I've done wrong here? He looks at it. He said, well, they changed the law. <laughs> I said to myself at that point, I can't, I can't do two things. I, I either have to be a lawyer or I have to be retired. <laughs> I took retirement. <laughs> but that was after 25 years, yeah. so that was enough. So uh, that's how I decided to go to law school. I was uh, the third oldest person in the class. Uh, a union representative was uh, the oldest, Emmanuel Tabashnik. And the second oldest was a black man named Anderson, who we were told got the highest paying starting job of anybody in our class. The firm wanted him for negligence work in the black community. Yeah. And I haven't kept up with anybody up there, so I don't know who's alive or who's dead. We had a few judges. Uh, went to some reunions and I got tired of going to reunions. Sure. So that was that story. The practice of law, when you came back, uh, did you have a, a, a mentor or two? Obviously you were with Ar Arthur. Uh, were there any other lawyers in the kind of legal community that you sort of called and picked up, picked their brains or, or somebody of note? The closest would be Jim Abdella. Mm -hmm. We were social friends before I went to law school and it continued afterwards, but it was, uh, uh, it was not come on over, we'll spend an hour together. I might have a question that was on tax law and nobody where I was knew as much as Jim Abdella. Sure. So I would ask Jimmy some questions and he would always give me answers. Uh, so that would probably be the only one that I can think of where I would look for support uh, outside of the two fellows that were already in the law firm. Right. Now of that, our course is kind of known for the litigation aspect of it. Was Al also litigation? Not that I can remember, and uh, I'll tell you one story about Arthur that uh, amazed, two stories I'll tell you. I was given an assignment like all the other students were, do some research and uh, come back with an answer to some questions. And I, I was in the office one day and I told Art, I have to do some research on this question of law. And he said, look up Business Corporation Law 909. I looked it up. He knew from memory the particular section of the Business Corporation Law. He knew, well, number one, he knew it was Business Corporation Law rather than any other law. Yeah, yeah. And then he knew the chapter. I, I, that was amazing to me. And another time we uh, were going to, he was <laughs> giving a lecture. He was on a speaking circuit for the age. American Trial Lawyers Association. And sometimes I would go along, and once we were going to Las Vegas. At a certain point, he said, did you pick up my briefcase? No, I didn't pick up your briefcase. That's where all my notes were on my talk I have to give. There's no way to get that briefcase back. He said, I'll wing it. Now he goes up in front of two or 300 
lawyers who are not amateurs. He gave, as far as I know, a perfect lecture, answered their questions, and that to me was very, very impressive. Uh, but, you know, all of the men around here, and I don't really remember women attorneys, they all had their pluses and they all had their exceptional talent in certain areas. But you know the law, there's too many areas. Uh, but uh, it's a good life, I guess. I'm going to segue because it's a perfect segue. I'm going to put before you a 1967 composite, Warren. You're not in it, but these are people of your genre. And I wondered if there was, as you look at it, and, and, and there may be a, as you look at a name, a, a little story or a vignette, it may be political related, it may be legal related, because I know you were involved in politics uh, with city council and Republican Party. So anyways, if you see something there that jumps out, uh, I'd love to have you just comment. Well, I, I, can, I see one name that pops out that will, I think, make you left, John Goodell. Mm -hmm. I was in a corporation once, and we had real property. And somebody went on the real property, and there was lakefront property, and there was a dock going out, and a person walked out, and one or more of the pieces of wood had rotted out. They fell through and hurt themselves. So John brought a lawsuit and he named me as a defendant. I said, John, that's a corporation. Well, I know that. I said, well, why are you suing me? Well, I sued both of you. Why? Well, I f figured you might want to get out of the lawsuit and you'd make some token payment of money to get out of the lawsuit. I said, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> we ended up in front of Judge Leetown Adams, and the judge said to John Goodell, how come you got Warren in here? <laughs> Dismissed. Well, Warren, you're out of this position as a defendant. Yeah. Now that, well, anyway, that was one thing that I do remember. Joe Girasi, he had a social life. Mm -hmm. we, I just had minimal amount of work with him social, in uh, the law. But I used to, with Betty, own a condominium on the uh, Atlantic Ocean in Bethany Beach, Florida. And we would go down with the family. And then there was a tennis facility right with it. So I played tennis, and we had, on occasion, four fellows go down to play tennis. Uh, myself, Henry Weiler, yeah. mm, I'll think of the name in a minute. But one year we were missing a fourth. I asked Joe to go down, and he said, yeah, I'd like to go down and play golf. Yeah. And we're down there and uh, I don't know how many days, and it was a Friday, I think it was a Friday, he said, you know, this is, uh, it was either Friday or Sunday, he said, this is very unusual. In my family, we always get together in, with the family on Sundays and have spaghetti. But he was down with us having it. Harold Johnson, mm -hmm. now, one year we had an awful lot of fun, and uh, Henry was at that time working, I think, for the county, doing PR work. And we said, we ought to write this up. And Henry said, I can write it up. So he wrote up an article on the tennis tournament <laughs> in Bethany Beach, Florida. Uh. And he submitted to the Post Journal, and it eventually got published. And the head were, headlines were something like uh, uh, Erickson, Reed, win tennis tournament. And then there's an article about 
who had the most slams, who had the most perfect serves. Whole baloney article. And people were saying, Gee, I didn't know you were that good. <laughs> Eventually I told them, hey, well, there was no tournament. There was just the four of us. <laughs> we, we made that up. <laughs> so that was something funny with a, yeah. another lawyer. Oh. Your practice principally was real estate, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get involved at all in litigation? Did you? Oh, very seldom. Yeah. I, I can remember one case, uh, I think the last case, some youngster had allegedly stolen an automobile. And in those days, you got a, the law firm got a, an order, send me a body defense. So I got picked to be defense attorney. And you never know, but I was sure the guy had stolen the car. And the jury was there, and we asked the people, you know, the normal questions. And they were asked, are you familiar with any of the attorneys? And the lady that knew me said no. I said to myself, oh my God, she's trying to help me. Well, I got her off. But then I used as the defense, you, people get confused. You heard earlier a lady say that she didn't remember me or know me, but she made a mistake. We have witnesses who have an opinion on this man. They might, you know, <coughs> Seeds yeah. So the guy got off. Oh, okay. And I, I, I said, this is the last one. If you're going to make me do more criminal defense, I'm leaving the firm. Okay. So that was the last one I had. But I had an interesting experience when I'm going to law school. I had law, uh, a classmate who began, uh, we ended up as roommates, Ron Gibb. Yes. And we had a place someplace in Buffalo multi-story, multi-apartments, and you would see people going in, going out, you'd wave. One day, uh, there's a knock on the door, and either two or three young ladies came in. They were probably in their tw early 20s. They lived in the building, and we're talking, and we're talking, and uh, finally one of them says to me, what size shoes do you have? A 13. What do you like, black or brown? I said, well, I wear normally brown. I'll bring you a set. What are you talking about, you're bringing me a set? I can steal them easy. <laughs> I said, no, I don't want any shoes from you. But so casual, just, I'll go steal them. Yeah. I wasn't used to that kind of a th thinking. Uh, uh, they're, they're all small memories, but... Uh, Bob Griffin, I don't know that I know, I, I remember meeting him, but what, what did he, what was his practice? Well, I think he did real estate, matrimonials. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're going back to 1971. I don't really remember that good. I think he just did a little bit of everything. The litigation was always sent over to Arthur. And anything he got that was not of interest, which was a lot of things, he would send them to me or to Bob Griffin. And uh, for a while, J. Russell Rogerson was sending me real estate work. He, he, hmm. He, I don't see him here. Doesn't mean much. Yeah, he should have been though. I, I, I remember Russell Rogers, very old guy, but I remember him at the time. Sherry Cadwell was with Russ, Russ Rogers. Yes, there was corporate work, big yeah. corporate work. Yeah. And the real estate was just a, a nuisance, I'm sure, to yeah. Jay Russell Rogers. Well, uh, how did you get into politics? Was it, were you a, your dad a Republican? Was that just a, ingrained part of your world? No. 
uh, my first recollection of my father and mother's interest in politics was they had a picture of Wendell Wilkie in their window way back, it would have been 1940 election. But I didn't have any interest in politics, but I had friends that did. One of them was Bob Carlson, insurance agent. And one night I'm sitting at home and Bob calls and he says, hey, would you like to run for city council? And I, I don't know. Well, why don't we talk about it? I said, okay. And I thought he was gonna come over. And finally he called me back and said, what's taking so long for you to get over here? Because <laughs> I thought you were coming over here. So I went over and Bob was there and others. And I thought, okay, I've been in Jamestown as a resident without working. I've been in Jamestown working with the Hunt Road Apartments for a number of years. I've got time, I'll do it. And uh, I was running against, obviously, a Democrat and most of the Democrat organization didn't like him. And the Democrats came out and they endorsed me. And I won. And that's where I first came in contact with attorneys. Mm -hmm. And I won't mention any names, because that's not fair. No, that's a part of my memory I'm failing on right now. Who's the mayor at the time? Was it Stan or? No, no, it was uh, Dunn. Oh, Fred Dunn. Fred Dunn. And I have one memory of him. Okay. I was trying to get something through the city council and I couldn't get the people to agree. And I went to Fred and I said, this is, this is common sense good. Why can't I get the people excited about this? And he made a very gross comment. He said, because they're part of the masses and the masses are asses. Fred Dunn, our mayor. Well, I never got through what I wanted, but I got an education as to how he thought about people. So he was the first mayor, and then it was uh, Ch Chuck Magnuson, and then that was followed by Stan Lundeen. And then I ran against Stan, and Stan whomped me. <laughs> we thought we were doing pretty good. We were doing polls, and the poll said, it's close, it's close. It was not close. But we got complimented by the Democrats. They said, your literature is excellent. Well, they didn't know that uh, my sister had a friend from high school days who was the senior partner in an advertising firm out of uh, a city in Michigan. His name right now escapes me. But uh, my sister said, my brother's running for mayor. They, you know, they got advertising, they had literature. You think you could help him? Oh, sure. So we chartered an airplane, Russ Fuscus and I. We, we flew out to uh, Michigan, and they had three or four people uh, waiting to help us, looking at what we had, listening to what we wanted, drawing up pictures. They gave us a lot of help. We had great literature. Uh, not enough to get me elected, but uh, that worked out fine. Uh, so, but I just got involved in politics because certain people that were friends said, don't you want to get involved in your city? So I did. And then uh, I lost. I ran for county office after that, lost again. I said, okay, I'm not going to go for three strikes and out. I'm quitting after two <laughs> strikes. <laughs> uh, but we had a lot of fun in politics. The best councilman I ever worked with was Bob Godfrey. And Bob had, uh, he had a way to generate sparks. 
but he was the most conscientious man that uh, I worked with. He did his homework mm -hmm. and he was able to talk and explain it. And uh, I spent more time with him <clears throat> uh, after council meetings talking about the city than I did with the Republicans. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sure he's long dead now too. I remember the name, but I, I never heard of his name. He was controversial. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, he got slammed hard by the Post Journal. Uh, but I thought a great councilman. I'm glad you called. I'm glad we got together. Uh, I'm, I'm going out to mow now. Okay, now. I'm holding up your time, so tell Julie it's my fault. <laughs> it's the lawyer.